I am, I, I think out of all the work that I've done, I'm very, very proud of the Ultraman movies that I've made. Now remember, back in the late 80s, we were going to do, we were trying to do Ultraman 80 with Adam West. And so there'd been communication back and forth. And again, it's kind of like the work comes to me. I'm not pursuing it. But Subaraya came to me, knew about all the stuff I was doing, and said, we'd like you to, we're going to start turning our feature films into American English language versions. And I said, great. So I, I did go to Japan uh, the Japanese government knows of my work and endorsed me and flew me first class airline and hotel meals. I had a, a translator and uh, I met with different clients and different people in Japan. And uh, Subaraya, the, the head guy there at the time, uh, Jun Yokoyama, Yokoyama-san uh, took me to dinner and said, basically, I, 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 we'd like to, I, I'd like to have, do, have you do some dubbing for us. I said, great, okay. So we started with Ultraman Ginga S, the movie, and we made a fantastic English dub of that feature film. It was based on the television series. And then after that, they, they loved the quality of it. And I think what I was able to do is over all these years, take all the skills and all the abilities that I had of dubbing and it was like one big rehearsal for Ultraman. And those dubs I'm really proud of because I think it, the illusion I tried to create was that these were American, Japanese American actors living and working in Hollywood, speaking their Native American tongue of American English. That's what I was trying to do. I did. American children, English speaking children all over the world will not watch subtitled content. Period. Okay? Subtitled films are watched by certain teenage fan groups or certain art house film groups, but mainstream American audiences, especially audiences of children, the, the American, the, the key demographic group for Ultraman, okay, especially boys ages 6, 7, 8, 9, they're not going to watch subtitled content. They never will. They never have. It's impossible. It has to be dubbed. So my goal was to create near-perfect dubs that lip-sync perfect, emotional performances perfect. Remember what I told you about Don Richardson? Acting's 80% emotion. The emotions have to match those characters precisely, and that's what I tried to do with Ultraman Ginga as the movie. Sue Brian loved it. And then immediately he got another film called Ultra Fight Victory, which was a TV film, kind of a sequel to Ginga. And we did that, and I had some great voices in that, let me tell you. Um, again, fantastic voice, and we, we had voice actor continuity. So the voice actor for Hikaru, and the voice actor for Sho, and the voice actress for Sakuya, uh, those, peop those Hollywood actors came back and did it again. And uh, so we'd have this marvelous uh, sound for the American audience. Then... They gave me Ultraman X the movie. Now, Ultraman X the movie is very special because it is the 50th anniversary film of Ultraman. Now, how fantastic is that? I mean, remember, as a kid, I'd be watching Ultraman Monday through Friday, do my homework, watch it. I loved it. And now I'm making the American English version that the entire English-speaking world will see probably into perpetuity. I mean, the, Subarai owns these, these versions uh, of the 50th anniversary film of Ultraman. I'm so proud and honored to be part of that. And again, that, I think that was our, I mean, I, that was, I think that was my masterpiece as far as dubbing. I think that was a near-perfect movie. I'm so proud of the voice actors and the script and everything. It, they, they were great. And we even had uh, in January of 2017, we had a limited theatrical release of Ultraman Ginga S. the movie and Ultraman X. the movie as a double feature. 
And we were in about 40 cities across the United States and Canada, Chicago, I mean, Chicago and L.A. and New York and Dallas and, and, and Toronto and Vancouver. And I mean, 40 different cities, the movies played in the theaters. The audiences loved the films. The reaction was 100 percent positive. And the the the. All the internet buzz was, oh my God, these are fantastic. You got to go see them. These are great, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in Chicago, the Chicago Music Box Theater, the audiences went crazy. And the buzz and Twitter and all that was phenomenal. Nostalgic parents took their kids to see it. So it was the audiences were full of kids and nostalgic adults and teenagers. And it just proved what the work that we did was was excellent, you know. Then we got more Ultraman, and uh, we did the, I, this is another thing I'm very proud of, we did the one and only Warner Brothers Ultraman film. Warner Brothers Japan was involved in a film called Mega Monster Battle Ultra Galaxy. This was a big budget movie, lots of characters, so I'm credited on this Warner Brothers picture. I mean, that, how... Again, how fantastic is that? Again, and, and, and the, the quality of that film is just as good as X in my Ultraman X, the movie. Again, it was the casting worked, the voice actors worked. It was just phenomenal. And then after that, we did another feature film for Ultraman. It was a sequel to Mega Monster Battle called Ultraman Zero, The Revenge of Belial. And... That one had a great story. Anissa Vong is an actress I use to play kid voices. And she, again, did it again. When you listen to her and you see it, see the kid actors acting, you think it's a kid talking. I mean, it's the most uncanny thing. She's a, she's a young woman in her 20s, uh, uh, and, and it just boggles my mind every time. It's magical when, he, when she does the role. And again, another fantastic cast. And then we just, uh, we did another film after that called Ultraman Saga, which was another big film, lots of dialogue heavy stuff. A, an actor named, a uh, voice actor named Paul Stanko does the voice of Ultraman Cosmos. Again, voice actor continuity. Uh, the same actor who was uh, Cosmos in previous pictures came back and was Cosmos in Saga. The voice actor who played Ultraman Zero, Daniel Van Thomas, came back and he was Zero in all the pictures. So there's beautiful voice actor continuity in these movies. And Saga was famous because there's a well-known Japanese musical group called AKB48. And these girls were in, starring in, the uh, Ultraman Saga movie. I even had some voice actresses come in from New York to do the voices of the AKB, you know, girls. When we did Ultraman X, the movie, uh, I was focused on the writing and directing, and my editor said to, I, I said to my editor, well, who are we going to cast for Ultraman X, the voice of Ultraman X? And he says, Bill, you sound like the Japanese actor who does Ultraman X. And I said, I do. And she says, yeah, you have what? So we tried it. We were in the studio, and I tried some of the lines, and then I played it back. I said, you know, you're right. I do sound like him, sort of, don't I? <laughs> so anyway, I played the voice of Ultraman X, and it was sort of, the way, he, the way I played him, it was sort of a little bit of a Gary Owens type of voice, you know, kind of a very serious type of uh, classic hero, you know. Ultraman is a... Kind of like a classic DC Comics 1950s-ish type voice, or at least that's that's how he was. And I saw X that way in some of the lines he was reading and his relationship with Daichi and all of that. Uh, that was the interpretation that, that we did, and I think it worked great, you know. And the guy who played Daichi, too, Britton Simons, was phenomenal. His voice... And the Ultraman property and the Ultraman brand is very, very famous in Japan. They have an Ultraman day in Japan. It is iconic. It is bigger than Star Wars in Japan and in many parts of Asia. Um, Eiji Tsuburaya, I think, was a genius. And honestly, he really 
co-created Godzilla and Rodan and Mothra and King Ghidra, all those giant Japanese monsters, okay? He was a special effects photographer and, 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 and effects man, and he had an idea for a superhero character, and Ultraman was the superhero character. It's basically what would happen if you needed a superhero to fight Godzilla. You need a big, tall guy to do it, and Ultraman is it. And uh, so the original show was in 1966, and they've done many series and many movies afterwards, and the merchandising is huge, and it predates the Power Rangers, and uh, and it, it, it's it's I'm so thrilled and honored to be part of that Ultraman universe. I think it's some of the best stuff I've done.